One of the things that really keeps me going day and night and that I need to live by because it keeps me alive really is the Word of God. I mean, a lot of people say things like, man shall not live by bread alone, but shall, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And they talk as though there's something to this reading the Word and that, you know, seven days without the Word makes one weak. You know, those kind of things that you can try to get by without. But I can give you a pretty much good example of how even in ministry, I myself, having just recently gone through a chastisement of the Lord, um, was exhausted these last weeks because it's just been so terrible. I've been trying to build this box, you know, to plant, you know, the plantings that I'm doing for tomato plants and snap peas and cucumbers, you know, things that I eat, you know, regularly and that I want to save some money on because really can't afford it. But um, doing that and then also posting the ministry and posting all these other things that, you know, were part of the devotional, devotional, you know, was exhausting me and I was so tired. I couldn't believe it. I was whipped. I was like a wimpy kind of crybaby laying around at night going, man, why am I so tired? Well, it took about a month and God finally said, because you're stupid. <laughs> and I was. <laughs> stupid, that is. <laughs> because, you see, Vidivo has always been about sharing Jesus in a personal, intimate way. It's been about my personal relationship with Jesus. It's been about what I do with God every day. And after a while, it got to be where I was doing for God rather than with God. And so... God decided to take a vacation, and quite frankly, my situation dried up. <laughs> it was kind of like the Spirit of God just went, <whistles> kind of like my hummingbird feeder being empty. You know, I need to fill that sucker up so my hummingbirds come back. But the point being is that you need in your life at some point in time to be filled and fed and watered and bled and you know all the good things that go along with kind of growing up and maturing in Christ. And one of those things that I do daily, or used to, was to read Daily Light. You know, I know recently Greg Laurie just came out and said, you know, he's been reading it for like 20 years or something. I went, <laughs> well, sucker, why didn't you say so way back when? But anyways, I was introduced to it by a friend of mine named James Yaney who went through kind of an NA program, and now he's got like an Outward Bound program, kind of, sort of, maybe, more or less, <laughs> Yaney style. But anyways, you know, he, he takes people out and ministers to them. You know, <laughs> in Oregon. But, you know, God bless him. Whatever the Lord's telling him to do, that he should do. But my point being is that he used to read Daily Light. And we used to eat burnt grilled cheese sandwiches, you know, almost every day because that was all we could afford because we got free cheese, <laughs> you know, and bread. But, um, yeah, I remember being that poor in Oregon that we would eat that and, you know, we would read Daily Light and you know, that pretty much inspired us for our day, you know. And that's one of the things that I enjoy about my life with God is that He's always brought me through all of my life by showing me some of the things that were exceptionally well for my soul. He's always brought me, as it were, to pastures of green, lush valleys, to still waters where I could drink of the goodness of God and I could be filled with His Holy Spirit. Not just in some stupid worship service, because to me that's like the most inane, insane way to try to feel like you're closer to God. You don't have to feel like you're closer to God by going to church. You can feel like you're closer to God every day, all day long, all through the day and all through the night. You can walk in the Spirit of God and you can talk to God every moment that you're alive. Whether you know that or not is for you to discover and to uncover as you learn and grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ as you become more attuned to listening to His voice and He becomes more inside you to show you his Father's will for you. Thy word has quickened me. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. As the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. 
Amen, Lord. <laughs> Give it one for God. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of the blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It's even more powerful than a forty-four, you know, and any gun that you might buy that you think that you've got to have in order to protect yourself and hide, you know, somewhere in your clothing or in your house or in your car or walk along as an armed guard. <laughs> right. Piercing even to the asunder and dividing asunder the soul and the spirit, and of the joints and the marrow, and it is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of man. One of the things that I've always done, you know, in my dissertations and my explanations and my commentary, whenever I'm on the web and I'm doing social confrontation, you could say, but social interaction with people, is that I've always brought to them the Word of God. I said, look, here, here's the Word of God. It says this. You're in conflict with it. What do you think you should do? I always say, well, who are you to judge me? I'll say, well, I'm not. But the Word of God tells you bluntly, trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean on thine own understanding, and all the ways of knowledge and ministry direct thy path. What are you doing about that? It says, today, if you hear my voice, harden not your heart. It says provocation. You can hear God's voice. What are you doing about that? You know, it says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who will pray to thou, forgive to all men liberty. What are you doing about that? You know, it looks like you're in sin, you know, so if you confess your sins, he's faithful just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What are you doing about that? As a matter of fact, when it comes to the Word of God, sometimes I ask people, what are you doing about that? <laughs> and it's always the same answer. Nothing. <laughs> you know, I mean, haven't you been there where, you know, you read something, you go, do you on that? Well, you can. But you see, that's where you get to decide what God is saying to you. You get to kind of play a game, so to speak, about whether God is saying it or not. But I warn you, be very careful with what you're doing with the Word of God. Because like Jesus said in Daily Light, His words are spirit and they are life. And they will reveal the intents, even your intents and mine, whether you know it or not. I often see what a man's intents are and they're very embarrassed when I confront them because I know what they're doing. I'm a man. I know what they're saying. I'm a man. I know how they're sinning. I'm a man. I sin too. I have intents. I have content. But the difference is, is that I'm not commenting to who they are. I'm commenting to what they say and how they're revealing of their own words the veracity and the truth of what the Bible says and what the Word of God says and how it is so true what Jesus said, how his word will reveal the intents and the contents of what men are saying. Be very aware of that because your life is in the word of God. It's not in the word of man, in pastors and commentaries and cute little cliches or Hollywood Christianity or cliche Christianity. It's in the veritable word of God. It doesn't have to be the King James myth, the virgin of the but it has to be God's Word being spoken to you by His Spirit to bring life into your soul, even as He did for me today. Because you see, I wouldn't be here recording tonight unless it wasn't the Word of God living and alive in me and causing me to be quickened, even as you've heard my speech, very quick, as He's quickened me and He will do so for you. <laughs>